It's um, it's March the 8th and uh, I'm just heading up to the studio now to start, <laughs> start working on programming some new stuff for part two of the Return to Eden tour. Uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, we're heading Europe-wise this time, uh, which is, uh, is going to be great. Doing more dates in the UK than we thought we were going to do. But that kind of happens, doesn't it? We planned on doing one date and then it grew into six. Still, that's five times more fun, I think, isn't it? Now, this is a particularly sad moment, I have to say. I'm sitting here in my little studio, um, <laughs> about to uh, try and work on Love's Great Adventure and White China. And the reality is, I don't have a copy of either, so I'm having to look it up on Spotify. Isn't that sad? Now, what's even sadder, I suppose, is the fact that I might have to buy them from iTunes. Once a hold on, you look like you look like you're on holiday, you two. It's oh, freezing. Well, until the bloody st the snow started. Hold on. All right. Okay. Here we come. Here we are. Secret mission. Hold on. We're all ready to go tomorrow. Passports. Got your passport with you? No, not yet. No, I haven't got mine either. Have you got yours? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. Mum's the place, word. Okay. I left some place warm and sunny to come where it's damp and wet and go on holiday. Good, you have to be down on me, don't you? about on and use this I would be external MIDI yeah no no just software instrument yeah I'm sitting here in the hotel room in Vilnius in Lithuania and I'm about to leave now and go and do a, an acoustic show but we're two weeks away from um, from the Ultravox tour which is uh, exciting and scary at the same time um, Billy and Chris came over to my studio last week and we worked on a couple of new songs which is good, you know, it's uh, shaping up and uh, I think they'll work incredibly well in the set. We have to decide now what we're going to take out of the set, otherwise it'll be too long. Uh, we've been designing a, a new stage set as well, uh, so the screens have gone um, because some of the venues that we're playing, in fact the majority of the venues will be playing in Europe, will be a little bit smaller than uh, the venues we played in uh, the UK, which means that the set has to be a lot more flexible uh, when we get there. So we have to be able to kind of build, add to it when we need to, and uh, take parts away when we need to. Um, so we'll wait to see that, and that'll be interesting. Uh, basically a set is just a, it's an environment to play the music, and the whole thing's about the music. And uh, I think the odd thing is the fact that uh, after these dates are done, that's it. There's nothing else planned. Uh, Ultravox will be getting put back on ice. Um, something interesting may come along. If it does, then we can make a decision as to whether we're going to pursue that and do it further down the line. But uh, as of the end of this tour, it's finished. It's all over.
10th of April 2010 and it's it's a year today since uh, Ultravox took to the stage in Edinburgh to start the uh, Return to Eden tour and it's been incredibly good I have to say it's kind of it's kind of outdoing itself it's been phenomenal the handful of UK dates that we've done uh, this time round um, due to you know popular demand uh, we didn't intend to do any UK dates uh, here it was just going to be uh, Europe um, but we we stuck these in and uh, it's been fantastic so we're about to um, we're about to head off and finish off the UK stuff which has still got uh, Oxford um, London and Bristol and then we head off to Italy <laughs> But the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this second one that we did this year, Return to Eden Part 2, seemed, I wouldn't say easier, but I was more relaxed as a musician, you know, and getting into it and moving forward as a musician, whereas the first one was just to do it again, to see if you can do it again. But it was such a buzz. I mean, it was great. <laughs> nah, uh, it wouldn't. I don't think it would have worked so much so, so well ten years ago. I think we. It's. The, I think the sort of um, the positive thing is is just got better, um, and we just had these sort of ghosts that were hanging around that really have just imaginary more than anything. Um, but the imaginary stuff is the stuff that causes you the most fear. You know, it's like when you're a kid in the bedroom when you're little and you see a shadow on the, on the wall and it's a, it's a ghoul or a monster. Um, and you just have to try and, with us, you just have to have the courage to try and turn the light on just to make sure it's not a monster. Um, and you just, you just have to do it. You know. It's the fear that holds it all back, really. Lady boy. And sometimes I fall And sometimes I Early. Now I'm sat here with half an hour. I'm 
don't know what to do, and that is at least a combination. <laughs> so I'm trying not to, uh, I'll have to get up to something. <laughs> Same boat, half an hour to go. All dressed up, nowhere to go. Yeah, well, yeah, somewhere to go in 30 minutes. How are you I don't drink. You okay? Really, absolute pleasure good. to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm good. I can't believe you're filming me, crisscross. I am. Oh, no. <laughs> no I'm a shy boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come for the girls. I've just come to get half a dozen passes for the girls. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Very briefly. Well, thank you, were Two sheets to the wind, maybe. <laughs> when I last wrote to them, looked as though they were going for not only the southern four sheets, but maybe the 14 to 15 sheets. Yeah. Then it was, you know, like he's always a bit like that when he talks to you. Yeah. He was like that. He's <laughs> <laughs> <was> right, mate. <laughs> we call him, we call him, just call him all the time, yeah. isn't he? Uh, he's just I've just, <laughs> I've just discovered Twitter uh, and have been uh, reading people's messages, tweets, I presume you call them, um, before and after the shows, which is really quite a new thing, uh, you know, to get instant feedback on what people liked or didn't like, or, you know, uh, how they thought you looked, or how they thought you sounded, or, or whatever, and it's fantastic, it's just, it's such a, it's such an instant thing, it's quite weird coming off stage and sitting down saying, well, that was okay, quite enjoyed it, or that was great, or, you know, and then reading the response from other people, um, rather than the mad, frantic, you know, grab a few moments to sign a couple of things as you come out the stage door, uh, well, you don't get much chance to say anything to anybody because you've been kind of shoved around a bit. Um, but yeah, the joys of technology. Welcome to the 21st century, Mr. Ewer. We're on a mission. We've just left the others. We've got the train from the airport to central Stockholm here. And uh, we've decided stupidly uh, that, um, that we could find our own way, yeah. And the taxi driver just said, Are you from Stockholm? And we said, What the hell do you think? <laughs> and he uh, said, You'll never find it on your own. And I think I've got a dreadful feeling he's right. <laughs> Similar to the one we was on yesterday. Because it's the same road. <laughs> it's the same road. 
but we're going 500 miles in the opposite direction. We're going to stop and staying at a lovely airport hotel somewhere. So we're in for a riotous night. <laughs> Four grumpy old men sitting around a dinner table. But I think there's a supermarket in there. Is, oh, that, that's too exciting. Yeah, there's a big supermarket, if I remember right, the opposite the, the, um, the hotel. So oh, yeah. Hopefully How they, can you remember that? I, I just remember a spectacular Swedish bargain bin. <laughs> oh, right, okay, well, that's it. That's, that's tonight's entertainment sorted. So what, what, what does one read when in Sweden, Billy? This. This. And it's a hell of a lot of names to remember. Swedish names. But I'm getting there. Slow, slow, quick, quick, slow. Fantastic. Oh, well, I wonder if there's no difference between a wolf and a fox trot. Mr. Flood, he can't tell the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> the sheer joys of plugging in. This is it, the dressing room. your appointment. <laughs> <laughs> and which doctor have you come to see? <laughs> I think I can hear his doctor feel good, look. <laughs> the decor is very reminiscent of the, um, the Marquee Club. It's very much like the Marquee. 1977. Yeah. yeah. Except much tidier. Must have been the same interior designer. Much bigger. I was surprised that there was virtually zero recognition of it. So I'm trying to figure out, hmm, well, the best I can figure out, it was right there. Yeah. Because they... They, they just moved to clean the out completely. Well, there. they, like, bricked up the doorway. Mm -hmm. They really changed it. Mm -hmm. So... Did you play the Mark with the Rich Kids? I thought, it's got to be right about here, the best I can. I can't remember. And then I looked up um, and I saw a little tiny I did a video in the market oh, once back in 1975. Yeah, here's the thing. No, it was rich kids, though. Because I looked into it. Yeah, very early slick. Like says, you know, oh, yeah. I still had one here. I still had any here. Keith, Keith Moon at the Hoover. We did a video there. What is that? It was for a Keith song Moon. called The and Boogie is Band in Town. Great. Which was nearly as bad as the title. It's bigger than that. I can't remember. It's pure. Playing it's pure. It, but I must have played them. Everyone played them. Fuck off. Yeah, no, it's one of those things that it, sometimes yeah. it was there and sometimes it was going and sometimes it wasn't. Yeah. I remember playing I'm sure I played the speakeasy. Oh, yeah. A funny one to play. Yeah. We've never played that. Yeah, you might have done, because my brother, I think my brother played there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that plaque, there was, COD told me they were going to put a plaque up for us. At the, um, and he said it was going to be at the um, PRS wanted to put a plaque up for us. Yeah, but I think one of us had the top ourselves from that. And he wanted to put it up at Electric Ballroom. Did he talk to you about yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. That's what what happened to that? That went cold. Yeah. Well, that's the way it was. Yeah. <laughs> I think, as I said before on one of the previous uh, recordings, you know, hell truly has frozen over, but now it's frozen over again because it seems that after a, a year and a half of speculation about whether we're ever going to attempt to record something uh, new, uh, it looks like we are. Uh, we're going off, uh, we've talked about it recently, we're going off to uh, Canada to go and do some, uh, some writing and recording uh, in little blocks, very differently from how we did it before. Um, just to see what it see what comes out, you know. Um, as I've said all the way along, I see uh, I see performing live, uh, you know, old material as a very very different animal 
to getting into studio and writing new stuff. So writing new stuff is a real difficult thing to do. Are we capable of doing it? I don't see why not. You know, we seem to be getting on incredibly well. Uh, hopefully thinking along the same lines. And I think maybe with modern technology, if we do a couple of a couple of outings uh, where we can be locked away from everything, telephones and televisions and internet and all of that nonsense, and just put our heads down, we should be able to, I think, uh, I've got great belief in the band, and I, I think we'll come up with something really interesting, which later we can then kind of email to each other and, you know, do it in our respective studios. Uh, so it's a, it's a whole different technological nightmare. but a bit of a fantasy at the same time. So yeah, um, looks like we're going to be doing some new material. You know, the, the way we're trying to work is quite immediate, um, but you, you, you get immediate results, that's, that's the thing, and, and really we need to, to settle it. So the, I mean, what we're doing this idea that we're going to do a couple of weeks and go away for a while, uh, mess about stuff and then come back again. That, 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 I think that'll work well for that because it'll give us enough time to settle with it as opposed to, you know, if we were a young band you'd have to do it and you'd have to, you'd have, to on, have it online by the time. It's hard to believe the time has That's what I like, you know, it can be projects, you know, you could do a TV program as opposed to this, as opposed to doing an album or you can do you know, you can, it can be anything. Mm. That's what that, that's what's exciting about it now. an album with a concept. There's something very 70s prog rock about that, you know, that term, you know, the, the, the concept album. Um, I think the concept is to get here and write a batch of bits of interest music. Um, I'd like to think that the rate that we're going so far, we're, we're doing incredibly well. We might run out of steam very quickly. Uh, I'm hoping we don't, but I'd, I'd like to do something that we never really did in the past. We write a, a, a batch of songs and then choose, cherry pick, the, the handful. We always used to write an album, you know. An album was 30 minutes long, you know, or whatever you could get on vinyl in those days, you know, 34 minutes and 32 minutes. Uh, so you'd write that, and then there was no kind of excess, you know, there was no stuff left over. You think, well, it'd be an interesting track at some other point. Um, we wrote enough for that. Yeah, that fits more with the vocals, doesn't it? I can't like the idea of me doing yeah, so this countdown. Yeah. Right, yeah, you do your mouth. So yeah, I'd like to think that uh, we're just going to write a batch of songs that uh, that seem relevant and uh, and you know ultra boxy. I'd, I'd whatever ultra boxy is these days. Yeah, when it takes up to twenty minutes to have a piss, I'll go to the doctor. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Sorry. You're going on a bank job. <laughs> 
So this, yeah, this is the, yeah, I just messed about with this, I was, I was doing it yesterday. Your thumb, the, the thumb chord and your sequence of four is it's not really bad. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I've been doing quite a bit, but then I can get something going, like I have been just now, and they'll, I'll go off and I'll come back and they've completely changed it. Like this first track, not completely changed it, but what I can tend to do is, luckily, Midge and Chris are interested in some of the chords I come up with. I mean, they could be sort of not interested, but they are. So that's great, and that's a real boost for me, again, after all these years, you know. And that's, lo that's lovely, you know. And I can make the form and the bones and the f feeling through the notes. Because whether you like it or not, if you've got the wrong notes, you don't get the right feeling. And uh, I walked away on Friday, came back, and I thought, what the hell's that? And they'd completely changed this chorus idea. They hadn't changed the chords, though. They'd just messed with it in a very enthusiastic yeah, way. Yeah, we were just saying, if it starts like that, there would be plenty of time to hear what that counter melody is before the vocals come in, you know? Yeah. We're just all very different, you know, like Midge is very, very quick with ideas. It's, um, I tend to be sparked off as we go along the way. Um, and then Billy will, um, Billy likes to think about stuff. Where are we up to? Um, three. This time. Yeah, three this time. We've been very quiet about it. We don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves, really. We talked about this. We decided not to mention it. Because if you do, well, then it all goes tits up. You sort of, or it puts pressure on you, you know? Would I? 
angels remembering Remembering Just remembering What colour are you calling this then? <laughs> no, <laughs> colour. So, join the club, one. You've joined the club now. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, that's, we're not going to talk about it anymore, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all we talk about. <laughs> it's a, it's it's an Indian go. carpet, yeah, it's a Persian it's carpet. Let it, it's letting go. Oh, fuck's sake. That's good, actually. I like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll try some of the skip things. I was thinking about those. Yeah, it's worth a bash. Yeah. And I'll figure out which of the, at least for this take, which of the solo piano parts in the breakdown I'm going to put a crash on. Do you want me to crank the guitar up a bit in the choruses to give you a bit more vibe? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting enough. <clears throat> if, if, the, if the guitar is louder, I get more vibe, but no definition. Yeah, okay. I'm going to try one uh, patch change. Uh, just play for one. I think it'll sound better. I got another ice cream. This will be great to play live. <laughs> but no, anything will be great to play live. <laughs> Warren's got his life in Los Angeles. Oh, it's and he's okay about how we're going about this. He's really okay about it. There's a lot less bass. <laughs> Obviously, Warren is going to be involved with the album. Of course, he is. It's Thursday the 24th of March 2011 and uh, we've been working on this album since September of last year. Uh, I'm just waiting on Billy and Chris coming over so we can go through uh, what we have to do next. We're fairly far on with the record which is great. Uh, we're supposed to be delivering this record to Universal uh, Records in Germany. Although it's a little worrying, um, I played them some stuff last week and I'm not quite sure what kind of Ultravox record they were expecting, because uh, this one sounds like an Ultravox record to me. Um, so I think they want to get involved, which is not a bad thing, it's, a, it's an alright thing, um, but they will have comments and suggestions to make about how we complete this. Now whether it's a breakdown in communications, a bit of a language barrier, uh, I don't know. Um, I've got a feeling their uh, suggestions might be that they think that we've just done a bunch of demos, which we haven't, we've done masters, and they have ideas of working with uh, various producers uh, who we don't know yet. I'm meeting up with the record company next week in Cologne to, uh, to sit and go through some of this stuff with them. So I think what we've just got to do is get on with what we're doing, which is what we're kind of good at. It is weird though, isn't it? It's not uh, full sustain. Yeah. What does it mean? It's not it's No, no, it, it's not. It's, it's like...
it's still, it's, I mean, music is still about to be, to be old, you know. Um, we're, we're experienced, we're aware of all that, but we're not beating our brow or putting ourselves into a corner or uh, putting too much expectations on us, you know, we're just getting on with it at the moment. The idea, like an album, is just what's the point? You know, it's um, yeah, it, we could do anything from just do a, a track every three months and just put it out gradually. And when you've got enough together that you want to do it as a lump, you can. Or if it comes out that we've got like you know 20, 20 things we like and we can't decide what which ones to do and which ones not to do, we could put the whole thing out and then you know cherry pick from that. might be completely bombastic shite. Well, that's never stopped us in the past either. <laughs> <laughs> Is that on? <clears throat> oh, the stuff that's going in there. I'm gonna... Actually, it'd be nice if you gave that to me a bit, you know, like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, no, I think that's that's, think that's good. Yeah, no, I, I know yeah, what you're playing. Your work really that's well. good. It's something that it's interesting that they're actually just coming to fruition now. We haven't actually, I haven't spoke to Midge about the vocals for a while. So on I'm this quite, one, I'm, on this one, yeah. So I'm quite pleased to know what's what's happening there. But I mean, basically, basically, Midge is singing it and keeping it up, isn't it, with the vocals in the verse? In, uh, yeah, in the mm, verse, yeah. yeah, and keeping it up. Yeah. So it's playing right through. Yeah. That's playing on. So that's good. I found that uh, Universal Publishing somehow have got it in their heads that Ultravox need writers for the songs, which is um, a little odd. Um, so I, I tend to kind of get the impression that uh, maybe Universal and us have very different ideas of what an Ultravox album should be. Uh, they've said we want an album full of hits and I think maybe that's what they're after. They want an album full of hit songs that'll sound perfectly nice uh, with the name Ultravox on it. And that's not our idea of an Ultravox album. So we've got a bit of a dilemma going on. We're carrying on here tomorrow, Billy and Chris are coming over and we're going to just uh, work ahead, uh, get on with the job at hand, no matter what the outcome is. And if the universal thing doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, uh, we will find another route, you know. Uh, good stuff will always uh, rise to the surface. Look at me now, what can you hear? This conversation's gone on for years. Fighting back words, 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 words of war.
Bloody hell. Okay, yeah. next chorus. So uh, I, I think the, the whole idea of doing something new now, it's, um, it works on many levels. Um, starting with a negative, you know, we weren't overly happy with the last recording that we did. We did it without warning. Uh, we were already a kind of faltering, breaking band at the time. And it sounds like that on the Uvox album. So I think in hindsight, We'd like to, you know, maybe do something that would just make that a bit better. You know, just something that uh, you think, okay, it was done properly. It was done with, you know, full 100%, you know, heart in it. It was done fully inclusive of all the members of Ultravox, uh, as opposed to that half-hearted thing that, that kind of came out. Although it's got great, some great songs on it, it still it was a mishmash, it was a mixture of ideas. So I think on that level, it would be lovely to do something. Um, thing that's made me worry about it more than anything else is the fact that we've been apart for 23 years and that's a long time to be away from each other to be doing your own thing and going off in your own territories and and, and you know exploring new territories new avenues of, of music uh, you know individually now if we can be smart and bring that back and bring what we've learned back from uh, the moment we left Ultravox, the moment Ultravox disappeared, uh, and utilised the best parts of that, we could come up with something actually incredibly good, incredibly strong. Uh, and that's what we're going to try and achieve. The great thing is, you know, we're not really committed to doing something. If it doesn't work, we'll be big enough to say it doesn't work and pull the plug on it. I've got a sneaky suspicion it will. What's wrong?
Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been doing quite a bit, but then I can get something going like I have been just now and they'll, I'll go off and I'll come back and they've completely changed it. Like this first track, not completely changed it, but what I can tend to do is luckily, Midge and Chris are interested in some of the chords I come up with. <laughs> I mean, they could be sort of not interested, but they are. So that's great, and that's a real boost for me again after all these years, you know. And that's lo that's lovely, you know. And I can make the form and the bones and the f feeling the through the notes. Because yeah. whether you like it or not, if you've got the wrong <laughs> notes, oh, yeah. you don't get the right feeling. And uh, I walked away on Friday, came back, and I thought, what the hell's that? And they'd completely changed this chorus idea. They hadn't changed the chords though. They'd just messed with it in a very enthusiastic yeah, way. Yeah, we were just saying, if it starts like that, they've had plenty of time to hear what that counter melody is before the vocals come in, you know? Yeah. We're just all very different, you know, like Midge is very quick with ideas. It's, um, I tend to be sparked off as we go along the way. Um, and then Billy will, um, Billy likes to think about stuff. This will be great to play live. <laughs> but no, anything will be great to play live. <laughs> Warren's got his life in Los Angeles, oh, and he's eight. okay about how we're going That's about this. Down. He's really okay about it. There's a lot less bass. <laughs> Obviously, Warren is going to be involved with the album. Of course, he is. It's on number eight. So touch eight and you can turn up and down. Okay. There's a lot less bass.
environment is that it's a house obviously it's, you know, it's my house here in Canada but it's, it's big enough to give us all the space that we need so we can have we've actually got three recording studios four recording studios set up in there we all each have an individual little setup that we can go and take the bones of an idea like take a copy of it put it into a computer I can go and work on a, a vocal part Chris can be working on a bass and Billy can be working on a keyboard part all at the same time or we go into the main studio in the, in the glass room there and sit down around the main computer and throw ideas together in a collective way. And there's very few places you can do that. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, very, uh, a very friendly residential studio. It used to be a thing you used to do back in the 70s and 80s. You'd go and live in the studio and you'd work all day and then you'd go and fall into bed and then you'd start again the next day. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. But without all the pressures of being in a studio that's costing you, you know, X amount per hour and you know that you've got to be out by next Friday and you've got to get the album finished and you've got to rattle through it and you've got to, you know, burn the candle at both ends. We're doing that naturally here, but in a very relaxed uh, environment. And I'm, I'm very lucky to have it, actually. Very lucky to have been in a situation where we're sitting in this stunning surrounding, uh, you know, making music. It's, life doesn't get much better. <laughs> 